come to this for the U.S. women. Four years of training down to two hours of volleyball. It must be Cuba tonight. And the Athens Olympic game is over. Cuba in the blues, out first, one nothing. Shadow to Shadow. Ramirez to Mesa. Cuba, one of the only teams in the world that run a 6 2 offense. And a for the Cubans. And like a 6 2 offense because they never see it except the Cubans on the floor. What does it mean to the lane? We have two setters on the court at all times. One in the front row, which usually plays right front. One in the back row, which plays right back. The United States, they play tight. They play this is Matthew Hinson. Tonight, they have to let it all go. The U.S. lost to China on opening night and came back and looked like they kind of found themselves beating Germany 3-1. But then the shocker, losing to the Dominican Republic in five, the team that is making their Olympic debut in volleyball. And then they lost to the Russians, so now they've left themselves right here on the point of elimination. And the Cubans are playing with some swagger, and they're also playing with three straight Olympic gold medals. Very scary situation when you come in facing a young team that's coming out the win against China. He's five game in and they're just winning with confidence right now. That's Cuba. The Cubans have something to play for tonight as well. The Cubans, if they lose, they go as a number three seed into the quarterfinals. If they win, they can move up to a number two seed. The event is three and one right now. This is Taiba Hamid from the United States. She's played well. The numbers have been there. But at times, her game has dipped. Good serves, had a couple of aces last time out. Another pass, led to an easy point with tie the three. You see Daniel Scott just take up, a little tap down. Heba Hanif setting up that point with a jump serve. Heba Hanif has had a great tournament numbers-wise, but sometimes inconsistent throughout the course of an entire match. Keep it down the middle, Sakura with the reaction. The Cubans went to Ruiz, and we've seen Ruiz good throughout this tournament. 11 kills against Germany, 12 against Russia, 19 against China, and then in a short day, just 9 kills against the Dominican Republic. Just flat out the leader of this team. Two times on the slide, the U.S. They pick up a point to Daniel Scott, and they need Daniel Scott to step up tonight. Daniel Scott did a real nice job there, a little back slide, just tipping it over the block. And for the best four out of five sets of games, as they call the United States. The 25 win by two, and that is an ace for Logan Tom and Mike. Of all the American players, Logan Tom has been the most consistent. She has been an Olympic caliber, caliber level every night. The most intense, showing the most fire. Out of a defensive player, Logan Tom passes the home court. And ace to the Cubans. They have thousands of fans here, and most in the upper deck hanging over the railing with flags. It's Korea, number three, one of the other middle blockers for Cuba. Both middle hitters have great jump serves for this Cuban team. And this is how we saw the United States play early in this tournament. They're making simple mistakes, having trouble with their ball handling. We've already got three aces. And that one was just under 60 miles an hour. Sakura sliding underneath to keep it off the floor. They just got blocked, and Cuba putting on a run. They're at the first technical timeout. It is elimination night for the United States. It is time to get serious. They trail 8-5. In a match they must win, the United States slow out of the gate. Cuba leading 8-5, midway through game one. Ben Watson and Mike Dodd, a 96 silver medals with you at Peace of Friendship, and a huge crowd here tonight, the biggest we've seen in the tournament, and that is just out by the Cubans. Gracie Burroughs, number 18, the, the Cubans love to set that lazy little one slide in the middle, almost like a half a two set. That time slicing the ball out of bounds. 
over pass. A hundred down is left for the United States. A point for the Americans. Well, you see Mason number 11. She's coming from the back row, so when Eva makes an overpass, she can't go up and block it. That's another disadvantage for that 6-2 formation. Gibbons not letting the Americans get anything going. Barrels number 18, so explosive out of the middle. Six foot two, leaper, long arm. Carlos Santos, the American setter comes out. Goes to Tyler Bahini. The Bears with a set for the Cubans. Three ball for the Cubans. So set in the middle to Barrels. Right now, the two very young setters for Cuba, Ramirez and Mesa, running a real nice offense. Cuba showing great ball control. Carlos has been in double figures and kills every time. Of course, there are so many other implications that are involved with this game. It is the United States and Cuba. It is the Olympics. But of course, not only are their lifestyles and their approaches to this game different, of course, so their political stances. As we take a look at balls on the short set right down the pipe. Cuba and the United States. Neighbors on the map, but they are worlds apart in approaches to most things. In fact, Havana is just about 90 miles from Key West, yet most Americans know very little about the island nation. But tonight, one thing to remember is that the Cubans have won the last three Olympic gold medals in women's volleyball. To the Phipps, one of the veterans of this American team. There's no player to the Phipps that the Americans really need for her to come out and give a consistent effort throughout the match. She's had moments of brilliance, but all in all, her play has been very inconsistent and a lot of unforced errors. Robin Almos Santos from Honolulu. This bad pass we've seen from the Cubans. See how the Americans hold on this three ball. Back to attack by Logan Tom. Love to see Logan Tom hitting that low height set out of the middle from the 10-foot line. It's like a play set. You see they take the middle blocker out, and Logan Tom just comes slashing across the middle of the court. Logan Tom just 23 years of age, but already one of the veterans in the squad. She was in Sydney when the Americans finished fourth. Point for the Cubans. It's 11 to 9. And that's where the, the Cuban athleticism can pay off when they have service reception mysteries. They can throw it high to the outside and just beat it off the block. Very, very talented young team. Rama Ortiz Chao. Just had a great tournament. Double figures in two out of their four matches. Outside to Ruiz. The cross court is down for the Cubans. Here she is, the leader of this Cuban team, Ruiz, number one. Consistently leads the team in passing efficiency, leads the team in defensive bigs, and she is their go-to hitter in crunch time. A tremendous vertical leap, and she's only 5 feet 8 inches tall. She will be head and shoulders above her neck. She calls for it again and gets it again, this time with a turn from covered by Sakura. And he's shoved by Ruiz. Ruiz is moved, the ball stays off the floor, and now it falls, point to the U.S. Ruiz really did it all on that play, she got moved and covered it with her foot. Cuba didn't recognize the break they had received and just waffled it out of bounds. Ruiz called her own, always fouling that sideline for the Cubans, both coaches, the American coach of Yoshida, and called her own right up on the sideline strike. See him at the bottom of the screen. Out to the floor on the far side. That is Mesa. And Mesa is one of the two setters not known for her hitting ability. That's two great skills down the line for her in this match. Service there by Boris. And you can hear the Cuban fans half a world away, hanging over the rail in the upper deck in the darkness of the corner of Peace and Friendship Stadium with their flags. They're singing and dancing. They love to win. They love to beat the United States. Again, another back row blocker. 
Every time Scuba overpasses, those setters have to drop their arms and they're going to be called. Calderon has lost his early lead, all of his momentum. Squandered away, and the Americans can catch the Cubans at 13 in game one. We are 5 of 13 as the Cubans have a communication problem. Just love the facial expressions of number, number six, Ramirez, for Cuba. So emotional. Shows everything on her sleeve. Both teams have something to gain, but only one, the United States, has everything to lose. The United States must win to advance to the quarterfinals. If the United States loses this match, they are finished in Athens. Meanwhile, the Cubans can improve their position. Right now, they are sitting third. If they win, they can move up to second. That is seedings. That makes your opponent a lesser opponent as you move to the quarterfinals. So a little bit for Cuba to gain. But for the Americans, all the chips are in the middle of the table. We're going to have uh, basically all or nothing. We, they must win this game. If they don't, they're out of the tournament. If they do, they're in. It's as simple as that. But no great prize for winning as well. they got to face number one Brazil if they win this. And they're down to serve for the Americans. And a service error. The Americans can never afford any mistakes tonight, mental or physical. Cuba is outstanding. Although the Americans came in as the top ranked team in the world, Cuba is number five, and his rankings can be a bit misleading moving into the Olympic Games. Teams were not put together for the last minute. Get in the net for, for the Americans. Actually, the Cubans have played three or four minute errors early here in game one. Whistles raining down to the upper deck. Block and that was very long. Explosive player number one, just ripping it off the American block. There's a shot off the block now. Harris used to play stealing the defense off the block. It's a outside hitter intentionally, goes off the hands and out of bounds for the point. Logan Tom has probably done that a couple hundred thousand times in her life. She began in Salt Lake City. Last match against Russia, she really did a good job of mixing up her power and her shot. And her most effective hitting match of the, of the tournament. And she just paints the corner with an ace. Logan Tom has been the choir leader of this team for the last 10 days. Tonight, they have to have her. Logan Tom to serve for the United States, leading 16 15 in the fourth to the match. They have to win, or they can pack their bags and get on a plane. Final day of cool play, the women's tournament. Cuba is already through the quarterfinals. They can improve their standing and go as another two seed. Top four in each pool of six advance. The rest go home. Luis Calderon, the Cubans have won three straight Olympic gold medals. on the far side. Such an active right arm. Hitting on that right side. Obviously doesn't get a lot of attacks because she's a setter in this 60 offense. And Mike Todd break it down for you as we move along. Logan Todd out of the back row and Mike has been saying it all tournament long. Why did they not go more to Logan Tom? Well, this play is just run to perfection and Logan Tom again out of the middle. So effective. Tip of the net, a joust, somebody is into it. Cuba, the Cubans again. Cubans really starting to break down with their ball control here. Mid-section of game one. Hey, 
There's a great young outside hitter for the Cubans, uh, Cheese, number eight. Didn't even play in the first match against Germany, was on the bench and has come on to become one of the mainstays opposite Ruiz as the big outside hitter for the Cubans. Another service error for the Cubans. So the Cubans have been dancing their way through full play, enjoying themselves, and they're really playing with just a, a bit of pressure tonight, a chance to improve their sitting, but the Americans are playing a bit more loosely right now. 2017, the U.S. Toshi Yoshida, his fourth year as the U.S. national head coach, but he was also there as an assistant in Sydney when this group finished fourth in life when they left Australia. Even though they were out of the medals, they had to feel very good about the future of women's volleyball in the United States. Well, I think after Sydney, throughout the last four years, and coming into this tournament, they felt like they had the physical capabilities to compete with anyone, the technical capabilities. And so far, it just hasn't turned out for the U.S. A, a total team effort just hasn't materialized. And the United States is starting to put it together, leading 20 to 17, they're on a 10-4 run. In the middle and covered by the United States. Balls to turn back. Once again, the United States block is there, and Ortiz gets nothing. But the U.S. is in the net, and they're not going to like that call. You see Saida Hanif is spinning around. And the refs are scared. Big break for the Cubans. They were down and out in this game one, and now a little bit of light. They go right back to Hanif. Great to hit by Carrillo. Ruiz hanging in the air. It's the floor going flat out. They are living on Ruiz. And when they need it, they go to that number one right there. Renika Ruiz, two-time gold medalist. Kind of like the mother hen with her little chicks around her on the court. She's their leader. She's been there the longest, and uh, she shows them how to get it done in front of her. She's only 26 years of age, her third Olympics, and she just mentioned my two gold medals. She doesn't know how to leave the Olympic Games early. And it's funny, she's hitting against players 6'3", 6'4", she's only 5'8". The coach called her on and said she has an ama amazing training regime, which has kept up her vertical leap, and uh, she's been paying off in these Olympics. She's had an outstanding training. She must think the Olympic Games don't end until she hears the national anthem. Two for two for her so far, and Cuba has a program three straight. Yet coming in, just mild favorites. Why? Because they only return four players from Sydney. This group has stripped down and rebuilt, and once again, they are pushed. And he's late to get to that one. Ruiz demanding the ball and paying off each time. And there is the emotion, the flair that the Cubans bring to the court. So explosive. They just seem to be playing, enjoying the game a, a lot more right now than the Americans. Five kills for Ruiz. Out of 20. And a great day by Ortiz. The United States, if anything is working well for the United States, I would say net play, or blocking, or jumping on the overpasses. That time tell you about him, very aggressive on the defensive overpass. Big throw for the Americans. Let's keep the flips. And keep the flips with the ace, as she's called her mid-30s. She was on the national team in 1986 as a 17-year-old. Ended up leaving the country and going to Italy for 13 years. Didn't want to come back. Turned down numerous requests, numerous invitations. And finally, one of her teammates talked to her there. She digs in the back row. Logan Todd. Again. Point for the Cubans. Great scrambling defensive plays by the Cuban de defense. Fans are loving it up there in the rafters. It's just a great hit to the Great serve. It's going to be an ace. 
Well, it's in the 18 loves that. The best jump server, most effective jump server for the Cuban team. That was over 60 miles an hour. They score a lot of points when she's serving in this rotation. Americans have to bear down right now and pass this serve. Third and 25, got a win by two. Point U.S. And there's Kofar Akhanif, Taiva's dad. He celebrates for about three seconds at a time and goes back to that very weird look. Steve, the tucker on the players and the players, no doubt about it. Taiva Hanif, the father from Southern California. The Solis have a bound. Who serves that one? They broke about 12 miles from each other. Ruiz. And the U.S. has a team point. He's doing a real good job on that right side. Two transition plays in a row, scoring points for the United States. Better down here. Had a very quiet game against the Russians. Coming out here, putting a lot of pressure on the Cubans with their jump serve. She was in Sydney, said she got lucky making that team. And her goal all along has been to get here in Athens. An overpass and a point. Logan Tom jumps on it, and the United States, in a match they must win to survive, comes back to win the opener. 25-22. United States in red. Cuba through the net in blue. Two countries separated by 90 miles of ocean and a world of ideology. Right now, it's all about Olympic volleyball. Luis Calderon and the Cubans, three straight Olympic gold medals. The United States trying to win tonight to play another day. Toshi Yoshida, his fourth year as the U.S. national head coach. Gibbs group loses tonight. They are done in Athens. They have to win to move on to the quarterfinals. If Cuba wins, and they're already through, they will improve their seed from a number three to a number two. This is Barros to serve for the Cubans. Taiba Hanif. And all six Americans were inside the 10-foot line, and nobody could cover it. That time Cuban had enough time to set up a great block on the outside. Had her bound in the middle on the quick set from Robin Amos Santos. And that's one thing the Americans need to continue to push. Santos, the setter to do is run the middle, run the middle. We need to receive serve better so that she can have that opportunity. For Cuba Phipps, they call her Cuba Serva. And digging in the back row. Logan Tom, who led the Americans to a win in game one with five kills. And Heather Bound is right there. She has been opportunistic throughout the tournament, Mike. And she was right on the spot again. Exactly what the Americans need to do. Take advantage of every defensive miscue by Cuba. Be aggressive at the net. Bad set, Ruiz with no chance as that carried over and out, and it's 3-1 to U.S. So again, the Cuban four ball control leading to an easy point for the Americans, and we spoke about it on our way to the Peace and Friendship Stadium tonight. Which Cuba would the Americans get tonight? The Cuba that lost after winning the first two and then losing three straight to Germany in the first round? Or the Cuba that beat China in five? And right now it's looking like the Cuba that lost to Germany. Germany also has a player that's a part of this play because Germany right now is through to the quarterfinals unless the Americans win. The U.S. wins, they knock Germany out. Cuba goes either way. So you have to figure somewhere in this crowd of 8,000, a piece of friendship, are a few Germans. Not a good attack by the Cubans. Mesa had nothing on it. Heather Bound has come alive. Another perfect pass by the Libero, Stacy Sikor in transition, leading to the Americans running that great middle. Heather Bound there, ripping cross court. Heather Bound has six kills, the Americans 5-1. Big village for Toshi Yoshida and the American women. You had to figure not much was said. Most were probably listening on their, their headsets to music.
having some quiet time thinking about this moment, a moment that could change the rest of their lives. Not if they win, but if they have lost. They worked four years to get here, and they're in danger of being knocked out in pool play. And I tell you, this American team throughout the tournament, their collective will had to be questioned because they've been inconsistent. They hadn't shown that real grit, that desire, that yearning to win. U.S. leading 5-1 in Game 2. They won the opener 25-22. A great comeback, and the block is there. And again, Heather Baum is part of the formula. Logan Tom, number 15, does such a great job of not only moving her feet to the outside, but watch her swing her arms, get up, and really press that left hand over, completely sealing the line attack. The United States has reeled off six straight points in Game 2. Taiba Hanif. And the American bench celebrates. Hanif is doing a great job tonight of being more aggressive in her approach. She's gathering herself and really getting to the ball and hitting it at its highest point of contact, something she hasn't been doing with much efficiency throughout this tournament. They said to the bench, Munoz is in for the Cubans. Cubans run the pipe, right down the middle, no touch by the Americans, and it is a point for the U.S. that is eight in a row, and the Cubans look befuddled. It's not often you'll see them without a lot of exuberance, a lot of energy. They walk over and surround Luis Calderon, their head coach. He's not an excitable guy. Like we've talked about the Cubans and how different everything is about Cuba, including their approach to volleyball. They run a 6-2, what does it mean? Well, it's a, it's basically, you have a setter in the, that middle line is the net. You have a setter in the front row and a setter in the back row, but when the setter's in the front row, it's a hitter. When the setter moves to right front, he's still she's still a hitter, and then the setter moves to right back and becomes a setter, and the setter from the back row moves forward and becomes a hitter. The real pluses to the 6-2 attack is that you always have setters in the front right to run the ball in transition. And you just play better defense because you always have another setter in the back row. Of course, with a 5-1, you have one setter, touches the ball all the time. And that's really the key because they set up great connections with all five of their hitters. Mike, they're the only team in the world that runs it. They've won three straight gold medals. Why are they the only team in the world that runs it? because they have superior athletic ability and they can uh, basically get away with it. Now they're not playing well right now. That is a service error by the Americans. The Cubans in game two, six swings, zero kills, two hitting errors. The U.S., much better percentage, five kills in seven swings. But a service error makes a two serving eight. Logan Tom, off the block and out. And Logan Tom with a nice little job of outside hitting, just going up, hanging, and tooling the Cuban block. Toshi Yoshida, he came out and met the media. We talked with him after that shocking loss to the Dominicans. He swallowed hard and answered the question, how did it happen? He gave a lot of credit to his opponent and said his team wasn't ready to play. Logan Tom into the block and down another point for Logan Tom. The Stanford grad is carrying the U.S. national team. Logan Tom that time sliding it through the Cuban block. Cuba, like Brazil, one of those teams that just has to play with passion and emotion. And right now, they are flat and showing none of that. And they're down from the University of Hawaii. Stuff blocked by the Americans, but out and a point for the Cubans. Ruiz doing a real good job of saving that trap set, tooling the American block. If anyone's going to get them jump started, it's this fantastic outside hitter here. Great defender. And ace as it comes off the net. Again, if you haven't watched international volleyball much in the last few years, this is a let serve and it is now legal. Ball just dies in front of the American passers. Back to Tom. Off the hands and dug in the back row by Ruiz. They fake middle, go to Tom again. 
You've been saying it, Mike, and they're starting to listen. Feed Logan Tom. And Logan Tom so effective moving around the court. This time he's going to hit a little flare on the inside. Catches number six, Ramirez, sleeping. And just buries that ball cross court. Just a fun player to watch, Logan Tom. So active both defensively and offensively. Fifth any inch for Logan Tom. Her dad, Melvin, played for the Philadelphia Eagles and the Chicago Bears in the late 60s and early 70s. Cubans answer back. That was Cubans' second kill of the game. Only their second kill. Long week for Toshi Yoshida and his staff. Logan Tom again. Stacy supported continues to do a great job of passing those jump serves. Logan Tom, the beneficiary. Hitting great from the left and right side. There you see Sakura, such a spark plug in the back row. Logan Tom was the only American who played well against Russia. Well, I, I shouldn't say the only, but by far the best American on the floor that night. 19 kills. She's already got nine here tonight. Ramirez, number six, on that right side. And another defensive gem by Ruiz, number one there. There's the emotion. It's always just below the surface for the Cubans in there, Mike. And as a miss it, they call a wall ball, and he just missed it. It's a pop-up. Still the Americans lead by five. And they won the first game 25-22. The Americans have to win or their Olympics are over. Cuban is already through to the quarterfinals. They run the slide to Danielle Scott. And that's what the Americans need more of, that middle hitter. Coming around behind, that will set up their outside. All starts with the pass. Americans doing a good job of passing in this game too. And now Scotty, three-time Olympian to serve. Logan Tom covers her own. And Kiba Phipps gets stuck on the knees. Even Phipps really hasn't got a lot of sets so far in this match, and you can tell she's just out of rhythm here. Tried to cuff it down, and Cuba right on that. Cuba has put together a 6-3 run, trying to climb back into game two, trying to get back into this match. Cuba Phipps again, just got grouped, took it a little higher. Now Cuba will just have to go across on the third hit. Chance for the U.S. A tough back set by Almo Santos to Hanif and a misplayed ball. Munoz couldn't handle it. It's a point for the Americans. And Baha Hanif, Taiva's dad, shakes that flag after every point. Well, we talked about it before. The Americans have just not been able to put together back-to-back -to -back games, consistent performances. And let's see if they can do it here in game two. No touch by the Americans, and now the U.S. leads Cuba 15 to 8. Munoz, number 13 there, one of the young subs coming off the bench. Hitting a waffle ball. And Logan Tom just missed wide, but it's an aggressive mistake, and they applaud the effort. Gotta love it, Logan Tom's playing great defense first, then trying to rip it from the 10-foot line, doing it all. Cubans, superb athletes are capable of big runs at any time. They haven't played their best, best volleyball tonight. Nice dig by Almo Santos. Honey, cross court. And past the double block, and it's 16 to 9. And sometimes it's the little things. Heather Bound with a great jump back set, middle hitter. The Americans lead the Cubans 16 to 9 in game two. They won the first. They are holding on, but they are running out of chances. United States leading Cuba 16 to 9. Final day of pool play in the Women's Olympic Indoor Volleyball Tournament. The Cubans are through to the quarterfinals. The Americans must win or they are done in Athens. And Taiba Hanif just got handcuffed. 
And the Cubans back within six. Just a forgettable play all the way around for both Cuba and the United States, but Cuba gets the point. The United States won the opener, 25-22. We played best three out of five. The first four games are to 25, win by two. If we get to a game five, we still win by two, but we only played a 15. Logan Tom has been outstanding for the Americans, especially tonight, but throughout this tournament in Athens. Logan Tom doing such a good job of mixing it up, cross court down the line. This time she sees the opening, just ripping it down the line. Every time the U.S. gets a good pass and they can run something fast out to Logan, very effective. Gets into trouble when she has to hit the high balls. Logan Tom, a match high 10 kills. She's been in double figures every match here. Danielle Scott jumping on the free ball that danced off the net. She's got three kills. And Danielle Scott is a defensive player. She's a blocker, yet she's contributing to the offense. Well, it's all setting up by Heather Bound here. Just another great jump serve. Cuba can't control it. Scott, the beneficiary. Heather Bound so quiet in the match before against Russia. No kills, no aces. She's come out real strong here against Cuba. Back come the Cubans, Barros. The experience, the steadying hand for the Cuban offense. Six feet, two inches. And here is Ruiz. He's just 5'8", but is a leaper. Into the net, point U.S. So the Americans Keep that gap. Trying to break contact here with the Cubans and go up 2-0. A match they must win to play on. Aif is out. Lindsey Berg is in. We've seen this rotation throughout the tournament, but the first time tonight, Lindsey Berg comes in to set and serve for Almo Santos. We'll get a quick breather. And also Nancy Metcalf, the southpaw. Coming in to play the right side. Nancy Metcalf's parents are here. That's Dean Andring. Imagine Harry's somewhere in the vicinity as well. There he is. <laughs> now they're not talking to each other right now. They're both watching their daughter playing the Olympic Games for the United States. Take a breath, Dad. It's going to be a long night. <laughs> Too much for Sakura to handle. Sanchez. 17. Coach Calderon using a lot of substitutions right now, trying to find a combination that'll at least show some emotion. And that is just out of service error. Well, it's the first time we've seen Sanchez since the match against Germany, the match they lost, and she had 12 kills that night. But since then, they've gone to other people, and they have so many options. Logan Tom from Salt Lake City when she graduated high school. The mayor declared it Logan Tom Day. She was a star before we knew about it. And an ace for Logan Tom, the team's best server. And again, the Americans continue to put the pressure on Cuba with the jump serve. I gave a credit for an ace. She didn't deserve an ace. It was an overpass. as good as an ace. It pays off. 22-12. You don't see it in the stats, but the American coaches, believe me, when you hit a jump serve and you cause... An immediate point with an overpass or just a horrible pass that has to be bumped over for a free ball. You're getting credit somewhere. Not in the official stats, but somewhere. Those are serves that lead directly to points. The Americans, when they break that huddle, they yell one word, together. Now, never has it been more true than tonight. They have to come together as a team. Toshi Yoshida, his staff, and his group will pack their bags and skulk out of Athens losers in pool play and they came to these games as the number one ranked team in the world the u.s right now on a 6-2 run and trying to close out game two 22 12 and logan tom to serve sakura with a fist bump metcalf the lefty 
finally some relief in the faces of the American players. They've been playing so tight. This is just a great defensive play, but watch the set from Logan Tom. She sets that perfectly over the right side. Metcalf taking care of business. Everything going the American's way right now. That was an ace. Logan Tom just ripping another jump serve. That's her third ace of the match. And Logan Tom has put the Americans at game point and on the brink of going two up on the three-time defending Olympic gold medal champions. And the Americans have closed out the Cubans again. 25 to 12. That is a statement. Toshi Yoshida. He doesn't show it on his face, but you know he's got it in his head. A 9-2 run. A light. We go to game three on a night in which the Americans have to win or they can turn in their Olympic uniforms. They put themselves in a hole. It is the final night of pool play, and they have to beat one of the best teams in the world just to stay in town. And they, so far, have been outstanding. 25-22 in game one and 25-12 in game two. And Calderon cannot be happy with the way his Cuban team is playing. My God, they looked awful in game two. They had no ball control and, more importantly, no emotion. American block has been big. That is just out but for the Cubans. Ruiz and Mesa, they're two big scorers. who combined for 10 kills in the match, but only one in game two. See, the American block is starting to become effective. Here's the best jump server for Cuba, number 18, Barros. Heather Bound. Logan Tom taking that tough jump serving. Making an absolutely perfect pass to Amo Santos, right in the middle. Heather Bound has come off a rough game against Russia to play great for the United States in the first two games. The best match of the tournament was eight kills in the loss to the Dominican Republic. She has seven kills already here. A miss, the Americans appeal to the chair and get no love. So they just go in the point instead. And again, Logan Tom mixing up her attack. That time, with just a soft little dink around the block. Done such a great job of doing that in the last two matches. Again, the Cubans said two attackers go to the same place. And this time, it paid off. That time Mesa, number 11, tooling Logan Tom out of bounds. Six kills now for Mesa. And Mesa will serve. A good one, dipping down. And overpassing the chance here for the Cubans. Ruiz, cross court. You can see it set up, Mike. She opens to that side of the court and just pounds that ball. Just an absolutely great play all the way around for Mesa as well, number 11. She got it going with the jump serve and then took a free ball pass that was heading over the net, giving Ruiz a perfect set to the outside. Ruiz has seven kills now. That's her first of the game, or her second since game one. They go back to Ruiz, and that one she misses badly, punching that ball with a knuckle. And well past the end line. Calderon says, settle down. Let's relax. Let's play our game. Americans have been blocking so well the entire match. A cumulative effect. What happens when you're blocking well? You get in the heads of the hitters, and all of a sudden you see those wall balls. Like you talked about, about it on the ride over today. You talked about this young Cuban team, and you said, sometimes with young players, if you let them get out quickly, they gain confidence. But if you get on them, they can fall apart. We saw it in game two. And that's exactly what the Americans have done at no better time than tonight when they really needed it. The big key for the Americans now is continue the intensity. They have a time when they win and things are going well to let up, and they can't do that tonight. It's an overpass, and Almo Santos tried to push it over. Logan Tom off the block. And another kill for Logan Tom. She has a dozen. Logan Tom really finding a rhythm, seeing the block, seeing the seams. Just tooling the Cubans on that play. Logan Tom, part of a national championship team back in 2001, on the farm at Stanford. She is a legend in a couple different places, and one of them is Maples Pavilion. Blocked by the Americans again. 
Kiba Phipps and Danielle Scott. Phipps and Scott collectively setting up a wall for the Americans. That time it was Daniel Scott with that right hand pressing over. It was great technique right there. All set up with the serve of Logan Toms, getting the Cubans in trouble with service reception. Scott 6-2, Phipps 6-3. Dug by Logan Tom. Keeper flips the dink and it falls. Now you've been on a court for the last 20 years. You know where to put it. Keeper Phipps showing that great smile of hers. Dinking that ball on the outside. What a wonderful story. Went to Italy for 13 years. What does she do when she comes home? She buys a home for herself. Not just that. One for her mom and one for her sister as well. It's one of the really, really good people in volleyball. Keeper Phipps right there. Yeah. She bought all those houses in Las Vegas where she got Keeper Phipps didn't go to college. She joined the national team when she was a 17-year-old high school senior and played in the Olympics in Seoul in 1988. The team finished seventh. And then she had a problem. She was, she was banished from the national team for smoking marijuana. In those days, Mike, it was one and done. She wrote a letter of apology and she went to Italy. Many, many times they said, please come back. We've changed the rules. We're willing to forgive and forget. And you can come back and play for us. And she said, thank you. But no thank you. I'm staying in Italy. What changed her mind? Tara Battle Cross. She was then the assistant coach on the team. Went over and played with her in club in Italy and convinced her to rejoin the team two years ago. Off the Americans block and out. Give it back within one. Keeper Phipps even at 35. There's Tara Cross battle. And you'll see her tonight. And that's also a gun on Imani in the background. I'm almost assuredly going to see her as well. She was Logan Tom's teammate at Stanford and is the future of American volleyball. But right now, it's the veterans on the court, right? Right now it's all smiles for the Americans. And you're only going to see Imani when the other outside hitters are making mistakes and right now everything's going right for the Americans. Phipps. <laughs> Off the American block and a point for Ramirez. Referee calling a lift on Cuba there. Cuba just so out of sync, so frustrated. And the Cuban fans don't like the call by Luciano Gaspari of Italy. The Americans lead in game three, 8-6. Americans won the first game 25-22, they won the second 25-12, and they lead in game three, 8-6 over one of the best teams in the world, the Cubans. Jim Watson along with Mike Dodd, a 96 silver medalist in Atlanta, inside Peace and Friendship Stadium. We're in Folly Row, it's on the west side of Athens, about 15 miles from the Olympic Stadium. And tonight, for the U.S., it's the last stop. It's their last chance they have to win to advance to the quarterfinals. Cuba is already through. They can improve their seating. But actually, it's been the Cubans who have been playing. Well, I don't know if they're lackadaisical, Mike, lack of focus, or they just don't have that much to lose tonight, so they're not as motivated as the gals in the red shirts. Well, a victory for them would move them up and give them an easier first-round match in the quarterfinals, but uh, they've come out so flat tonight, and really, what's really surprising is the lack of emotion. It was a young team, and they four back from the team that won gold in Sydney. So a bit unpredictable. And there's Kiva Phipps again. She's had a great trip through the front row. Registering three kills. And she's going to go back and serve the floaty and put more pressure on the Cubans. That time the Cubans with a great service reception and the quick out to that player, number one, Ruiz. That's an explosive outside hitter, leader of this team. In comes Fernandez. When you need to go to your bench, isn't it nice to bring in a four-time Olympian? Sure. Ah! 
the top. Ruiz, you see her explode out of that stance. Same sequence again. Not as long, there's no touch. Point for the Americans, it's 11-8. You know, and again, the Americans get three up on the block in the middle. Putting the pressure on, causing another unforced error. Calderon, he knows that he has a young team, so he's not a yeller, he's a teacher. He's right in the ear of his players. Coach is allowed to get right out on the sideline. Toshi Yoshida, kind of a similar personality. Quiet man, talks, doesn't scream. Is trying to track it down and Heather Bound runs out of room. And give some credit to Sanchez in the back row for the Cubans. Three good digs. Toshi Oshida, fourth year, is the U.S. head coach. He's an assistant to McHaley and Sydney. We have a quick set to Daniel Scott. And Daniel Scott always has a big grin after she does something positive for her team. Having a nice match tonight, hitting out of the middle, putting up some good numbers, blocking. And back to the game face. Cuba with five hitting errors in this game. Again, it's a byproduct of young teams. Sometimes they're hot, sometimes they are not. Chance. Back set, far side. And it's not Ruiz, it's Ramirez. The fiery number six, beating the ball from the right side. Ramirez now with four kills. <laughs> Tip by Logan Tom. Logan Tom just seems to have a sense of the rhythm of the match, when to go hard and when to go soft. It's a real sweet shot right there. Just catching the Cuban defense unaware, and Logan Tom elevating so well on the outside. Just perfect rhythm. They went back set again to Ramirez, but the American block was waiting for it. Absolute fantastic one-on-one -on -one block there for Cuba Phipps. Just moving her feet to the outside, getting up and over. We'll watch it here. Logan starts it with the serve. Phipps finishes it with the roof. One-handed set. Pounded down and in by Sanchez. And that's what Cuba's capable of. Just an unbelievable athletic play by both the setter and then the outside finish. There's number 10, three gold medals to her credit. down the line and Toshi Yoshida the American coach put both fists in the air for the first time since he got off the plane I have not seen that kind of an outburst from him before and here you're seeing Hanif an aggressive approach Cuba with a great defensive play and here's the finish she's just going to go up gather herself and rip that down the line that is what coach Yoshida loves Toshi Yoshida, bottom part of your screen, staying around the sideline and called her on, the Cuban head coach, doing the same at the other end of the building. Sanchez, 17, doing a nice job coming off the bench, hitting on the outside for Cuba. Coach called her on, just trying to get some spark in his team, some life. Put it down on the slide. The Americans just doing a great job of not letting Cuba back in this game. Eight kills for Heather Bound. The Americans won game one. The Americans won game two. And the Americans lead in game three. Welcome back to Athens. The games of the 28th Olympiad. Americans and the Cubans in women's volleyball. Last day of pool play. The Americans need to win to advance. The Cubans are already through. 
the Americans playing like a desperate team. They won the first two games, and so now with a block, lead 17-12 in the third. Jim Watson along with Mike Dodd, a 96 silver medalist. And I don't think the Americans could have even dreamed of coming out like this against the Cubans, one of the best in the world. Eyeball that one and hope that it carries over the sideline. It did. There's that smile from Kiba Phipps that she flashes from time to time. And that was one of the big question marks starting this match. Kiba Phipps has been very inconsistent throughout the tournament. They needed her to come out and come out big, and that's exactly what she's done. Kiba Phipps not wearing them right there, but she has goggles in her hand that she wears during play. And that's because of the problem that she had. During the 2002 World Championships, she was injured during practice and hit the face and actually lost sight for 10 minutes. The blood was pooling up in her eye sockets, and that night she had to sleep sitting up. Eventually, everything worked out okay, but just to be safe, she's going with the goggles. And then that was right after she had just joined the team. They were on a roll. They were heading into the finals of the World Championships undefeated, and that's when she hurt her eye and didn't play the, in the final game. And to this day, she's just... Thinking if I could have played, we'd have won that one. It's got to be the scariest 10 minutes of her life. <laughs> Can only imagine. Balls off the block and out. The Cubans are much better than they're showing tonight. The Cubans were cruising in the opening round against Germany. They were up 2-0 and then fell apart. Germany came back and beat them in five. But since then, the Cubans... They've been perfect. They beat the Russians 3-2. They beat the Chinese 3-2. Those are two of the best teams in the world. And then they ran the table on the Dominicans. Three love, and that was the team that beat the Americans. And that loss to the Dominican Republic was really what has put the Americans in this de desperate situation this evening. Are you going to eight kills now? Having a good match on the night when they need it. And here's Ruiz, a tremendous leaper. Stay close to the floor on that effort. Another kill for Mason, number 11. One of the two setters in this office, offense. Robin Almos Santos, American setter from Honolulu. And here's Barros. for Boros. And Toshi Oshida is going to call a timeout right here. So he feels the Cubans creeping back into this game. Boros just ripping that ball down the middle. Best jump server for the Cuban team. Coach Calderon. Let's see you. Stopping one play at a time, just make one good play and then it'll lead to another and that's kind of the philosophy you have to have when things have gone completely against you so far. And that's a great way to start it right there with Barrows bringing in some jump serve heat. Onus now on the Americans to continue their good play and their good service reception. Not, not let Cuba get a string of points going right here. 15 serving 19. Now it's 16, serving 19. And Barros now has four aces in this match. She had seven aces in one match against China earlier in the tournament. Player that's capable of big runs of points. Logan Tom. And as they've done throughout the entire match, when things start to tighten up, quick set out to Logan Tom, tooling the Cuban block. She's been there all night long. Sanchez dumps it in the net. The Americans now at 21-16. They need four for a sweep of Cuba. 
in the first and the quarterfinals. Vera Scott, even though they have a huge lead, she's not convinced. That time Fernandez, number 10, just getting out and up and pressing with that right hand. Taking away the cross court. Great block for Cuba. Off the block and Logan Tom continues to carry the mail. She's got 15 kills tonight. Here comes Lindsey Burr back in. And Nancy Metcalf will join her. Santos going to take a brief rest. <laughs> Americans close in the back row. Fernandez with another kill. Toshio Shida looks up and says, just give me three. I just need three. Out of the game comes Fernandez. And here Scott <laughs> continues to suffer through it. That is a service error. Sakura eyeballed that one just out. Easy put away for Danielle Scott. Again, another great ser jump serve by Logan Tom. United States now sitting on game and match point. They need one to advance to the quarterfinals and stay alive in Athens. 